Good day, students. I'm Mr. Kobe Isitwa, the teacher for BC Mathematics. I hope at the end of the teaching, you'll be well prepared for your forthcoming examination. Our topic for today is on number base system. Subtopic, change of base. Record, uh, on that change of base, we have the expanded notation. Recall that you learned th that every decimal number x can be expressed uniquely in the form s equal to i subface n times 10 raised to the power n plus i surface n minus 1 times 10 raised to the power n minus 1 plus i surface n minus 2 times 10 raised to the power n minus 2 plus dot 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 plus i surface n minus n times 10 raised to the power n minus n. This is the expanded notation form. Example 1. Express the following in an expanded notation form. A. 9008 base 10. B. 302.568 base 9. And C. 1011 base 2. Solution. A. 9008 base 10 is equal to 9 times 10 raised to power 3 plus 0 times 10 raised to power 2 plus 0 times 10 raised to power 1 plus 8 times 10 raised to power 0. B, 302.568 base 9 is equal to 3 times 10 raised to power 2 plus 0 times 9 raised to power 1 plus 2 times 9 raised to power 0 plus 5 times 10 raised to the power minus 1 plus 6 times 9 raised to the power minus 2 plus 8 times 9 raised to the power 3. Recall that in example 2, you have a decimal value that is 3 point, I mean 302.568 base 9. Why is it so? If you look at your number line, you discover that after 0 you have negative values. So if you look at the unit value, which is 2, immediately after the unit value, you have, point, uh, you have 5. So that 5 stands as your minus 1, then the 6 as your minus 2, and the 8 as your minus 3. So you write in, you write, first 3 times 9 raised to the power 2, which is the 100 units, and 0 times 9 raised to the power 1, which is the 10th unit, and 2 times 9 raised to the power 0, which is the unit, and plus 5 times 9 raised to the power minus 1, which is the digit immediately after the unit value, uh, plus 6 times 9 raised to the power minus 2, which is the hundredth unit, that's why you have it as 6 times 9 raised to the power minus 2, plus 8 times 9 raised to the power minus 3, which is the thousand word unit. Then C, we have 1011 base 2. If you count the digits, you have that. You have four digits. So subtract one from these four digits. So meaning that the highest power of the base which is involved, which is two here, is three. So in writing, you write one times two raised to power three, plus zero times two raised to power two, plus one times two raised to power one, and finally you have plus one times two raised to power one. That is the expanded uh, method or expanded notation form of writing values in different basics. Two, our subheading is converting base two numbers to base 10. To convert from base two to base 10, we write the expanded notation form of the number replacing 10 as in example 1a with the base number you are to convert. Note a number to base 10 is, note a number to base a is composed of integers from zero to a minus one. What do I mean by this? For you to work with any base, you discover that for any given base, there are values you work with. Say for instance, if you have a number in base 8, the highest value you can write is that 9 minus 1, which is 8. 
Then what are the values you are going to work with? You start from zero to that eight. So you have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and eight. These are the values you work with. Okay, we have another subheading which is converting base two numbers to base ten number. To convert from base two number to base ten number, we write down the expanded notation form, replacing ten as in example 1a with base number you are to convert to. Note that a, note a number to base a is composed of integers from 0 to a minus 1. What do I mean by that? For you to work in any base, take for instance base 9. What do you do? The numbers you are going to work with will be range from 0 to 8. How do we come up with 8? Because we are working with base 9, the number is in base 9, what you do is to subtract 1 from 9, and that gives you 8. So what are these numbers? You have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 8. Likewise, if you are working with a number in base 2, the numbers you are going to work with simply mean you have only 0 and 1, because 2 minus 1 gives you 1. So you have only two digits to work with in a number in base what? Two. So that leads us to the second example. The second example says, express the following binary numbers in decimals. A, 100, 11011 base 2. And finally, you have 1111 base 2. To convert this to base 10, what do we do? We use the expanded method. First of all, I will advise you as a student to write down these values down. Take for instance the 11011 base 2. Then starting from the first unit, that is the first digit on the right hand side, you write 0 under that, then followed by 1, 2, 3, till you get to the last value. These values you are writing determine the highest power of the base involved. So take for instance the 11011 base 2. The first value takes 0, the second takes 1, the third takes 2, the fourth number takes 3, and the fifth number, which is the last number, takes 4. It means that the highest power of base 4, I mean of the base involved, which is 2 here, is 4. So in writing, using the expanded method, you write 1 times 2 raised to the power 4, plus 1 times 2 raised to the power 3, plus 0 times 2 raised to the power 2, plus 1 times 2 raised to the power 1, plus 1 times 2 raised to the power 0. Knowing fully well that any number raised to the power 4, and that is 2 raised to the power 4, means you multiply 2 into 4 plus 6, and that gives you 16. So you have 16 plus 8 plus 0 plus 2 plus 1. Remember that any number raised to the power 0 is 1. That is why we say that the last number is 1, which is 1 times 2 raised to the power 0, the 2 raised to the power 0 is 1. So 1 times 1 is 1. So if you add all this, you have 27 base 10. So for the last one, which is the 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 base 2, you have that the highest power of the base involved here is 3. So you First thing you write there will be 1 times 2 raised to the power 3 plus 1 times 2 raised to the power 2 plus 1 times 2 raised to the power 1 then plus 1 times 2 raised to the power 0. So in all you have 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. If you add all this, you have 15, this 10. So our next topic is on the conversion from this 10 number to any base. Converting a base 10 number to any base may be done by continuous dividing the base no 10 number by the base number to which it is converted. The division is continuous, keeping trace of the remainders until the div dividend is less than the divisor. The final result is obtained by writing out all the remainders starting with the last number. Example 3. Express 27 as a binary number. What do we do in this case? We we'll have our 27, which is given in base 10. Then we we'll have three columns. In this three column, the first column is the base we are converting this base 10 number 2, which is 2. 
which is the binary number. Then the next column, you have 27, and the last column of the third column, you have the remainder. So if you divide 27 by 2, you have 13 remainder 1. So the remainder, the 1 will be written under the remainder column, which is the R. Then if you divide, further divide by, because we said this is a continuous division, by that given base. So if we divide 13 by 2, we'll have 6 remainder 1. If you divide 6 again, further divide 6 by 2, we have 3 remainder 0. If you divide 3 by 2 again, you have 1 remainder 1. And finally, you discover that these two, I mean the one you have, which is the dividend, I mean the quotient, is less than 2, which is the divisor. So in this case, you write 0, then remainder 1. In writing, you start from bottom up in presenting your answer. In that case, you now have that 27 base 10 is equal to 11011 base 2. That leads us to the basic operation in other business. When we talk about basic operation, we are talking about four items here. One is the addition, followed by the uh, subtraction, multiplication, and division. But for the purpose of your exam, we are going to concentrate on only three. One, which is the addition. We are going to look at addition. We are going to look at subtraction and multiplication. So with that, we have that leads us to the example four, which says compute. A, 101000 base 2 minus 1111 base 2. B, we we'll have 11 base 2 plus 10, 10 base 2 plus 110 base 2. And C, we have 11 base 2 all squared. Solution A, we have 10100 base 2 minus 1111 base 2. And what do you do? You arrange these values according to their place value. You make use of the place value in this arrangement. Having arranged them according to their place value, then you carry out your subtraction. You find out that zero, take away one. You say cannot. So what you do, you have to borrow one. And that one is from the fourth digit. And whatever you are borrowing is equal to, is the equivalent to the base involved, which is two in this case. So, if you now take the one, so in that case, you have, where you have that, uh, the fourth digit, this one, if you take that one, what you have there now becomes what? Zero. If you take it to the third digit, it becomes two. So if you take two, one from again, the third digit to the second digit, you have two, and the third digit becomes one. Finally, if you take that, if you borrow one again from the second digit, the second digit becomes one, and the first digit becomes two. So two not take away one, you have one. And in the second digit, you have one. So which is one take away one will give you what? Zero. And in the third digit, you still have one, which is one take away one gives you zero. But you discover that in the fourth digit, because you have borrowed that one, so what is left there is zero. So you go to this sixth digit where you have that one. If you take one from there, whatever you are taking there becomes two in the next digit. So in the next, in the fifth digit, that becomes two. If you take one again, you have one left, and in the fourth digit, you have two. So that two, now take away one, you have one. And in the fifth digit, you have bring down the one. And the last digit is zero. There's no point right there. So your final answer becomes one, one, zero, zero, one, base two. Then for the second question, which says one, one, base two, plus one, zero, base two, plus one, one, zero base two. The same arrangement takes place. You take care of your, in arranging these values, you use the place value system. So you have, first of all, you have your one one base two plus, under it you write one zero base two, followed by the one one zero base two. If you are adding, you have one plus zero plus zero will give you one, which is one base two. So if you add in this second column, you have 1 plus 1, which is 2, plus 1 again, that gives you 3. Or remember what I told you earlier, that if you are working in any base, there are certain values you must write, and in base 2, the highest we can write is what? 1, and the least is 0. But you discover that after adding, you have 3. So what do you do? You divide this 3 by 2, which is the base involved. If you divide 3 by 2, you have 1, remainder 1. So you put down the remainder and carry the quotient. So putting down the 1, 
uh, carry the quotient to the next digit, and then in that next digit you have one. So if you add one to one again, you have what? Two. But you cannot write two. So what you do again, you further divide two by two, so you have one remainder, what? Zero. So you put down the zero, then followed by one. So your final answer will be one zero one one base two. Then the third one, which is one one base two, all squared. What that means is that you are multiplying one one base two by itself, which is one one times one one. You carry out your normal multiplication. So if you have one times one will give you one, and one times one you have one. Then in the second multiply, if you are using the second multiply, you start with the second digit, which is another one times one will you have one and one. Then adding you have one, and if you add one to one, you have another two. Because you cannot write two, because you are dealing with number in base two. So you have to divide this two by two. You have zero, I mean one remainder zero. You put down the remainder, which is zero, then carry the quotient, which is one. If you add that one to that one, you have another two. So if you further divide, you have zero and what? One. So you write, the final answer becomes one zero zero one base two. In conclusion, thank you for being part of this class. Hope to meet you in the next class. Thank you. Good day, students that are viewing this program today. My name is Mr. Peter Wanono. We are here to take you on revision in mathematics for senior secondary uh, level. Today, we are going to be treating a topic on matrices. By definition, what is a matrix? A matrix is simply a set of numbers or elements arranged in a rectangular array or pattern. The array is an arrangement in rows and columns which represents the order of the matrix. For example, if you are given the following matrices, say A, 1, 12, 1, 3, 5, 4, which is arranged in rows and columns. And another example of a matrix again can be 4 and 5, which is also arranged in column or five seven six which is also arranged in what in row and column with these matrices that have been given to you as an example can represent the order of a matrix the first example given is a two by three matrices which means you have two rows with three columns the other one is a two by one matrix which means it has two rows and one column. The third one is a one by three matrix, which means it has one row and three columns. Then the fourth one is a two by two matrices, which means it has two rows and two columns. And finally, the last one there is a three by two matrix, which means it has three rows and two columns. Here, there's an example we are going to cite. The table below shows the amount spent on bread, sugar, and milk used by the Adekule and the Johnson families in a week. Here we have the table where we have the rows and the column. The rows represent the item bought, which is bread, sugar, and milk, while the columns represent the both families, which is the Adekule and the Johnson family. Now. A question is asked, write the numbers, the numbers as a matrix. B, 
write Mrs. Adekule's shopping list as a three by one column matrix. C. Write Mrs. Johnson's shopping list as a one by three roll matrix. And D. Write the number of the number bottles of milk as a roll matrix. In solving such a problem, you see, in A, the matrix form is given as what a three by two matrix, where we have 15, 10, 4, 7, 18, and 20. You can see it is arranged in rows and columns. We are going to take some questions on matrices. Now we have 3A, which is a matrix, a scalar multiplication, can be seen as repeated addition. That is A plus A plus A. That is your 3A. So it means as you are adding the matrix A in three places. So here we are going to add the elements again, element by element. So we have 2 plus 2 plus 2, x plus x plus x, y plus y plus y, 0 plus 0 plus 0. Now if you solve this now, it will also give you the same solution as we have done when we are using the scalar just to multiply the matrix. So we have 6, 3x, 3y, and 0. So that is for scalar multiplication. Now, int, to multiply a matrix by a scalar, multiply each element of the matrix by the scalar. Also, scalar multiplication is also called repeated addition. You must take note of that, that scalar multiplication is also called what? Repeated addition. Now, hint, to multiply a matrix by a scalar, multiply each element of the matrix by the scalar. Also, scalar migration is also called repeated addition. Take note of that. It's very, very what important. That matrix scalar migration is also known as what repeated addition. Now, let us look at another example here, where we have this is a likely examination word question. Here we are asked to find x if five bracket that's five into the matrix four three seven three minus 2 into the matrix 1, 4, 3, 2 equals the matrix W, X, Y, and Z. Now, what we are expected to just find is to find the solution of this matrix that does not have a real number in that particular word, matrix. All you just need to do is to follow the same pattern. Multiply this first matrix by the scalar 5 and the second matrix by the scalar 2. When you do that, the first matrix will give you 20, 15, 35 and 15 minus the second matrix which is 2, 8, 6 and 4. Now by the time you solve again following the addition and subtraction of matrix, we'll find out that you have 20 minus 2, 15 minus 8, 35 minus 6, 15 minus 4. And this will give us the resulting matrix which we are asked to find which is 18, 7, 29 and 11. Now, if you look at that particular matrix, you just go to where the position of X is and locate it with the answer you got. Whatever answer you get that is equivalent to that value X, that means the value of X is equivalent to that particular word number. Therefore, going by this judgment, we find out that X equals 7. So, I want to wish you well as you have gone through this uh, revision class. Please, this particular revision exercise cannot cover everything you need to know to prepare for your exam. But this is just to give you a clue on what you, are, you need to do. Yes, I want to thank you all for being here to, for this revision exercise. Please, do well to revise all other aspects of, mat of mathematics topic that can aid you to pass your exam successfully. Thank you very much and God bless you.